Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to another Blood Splatter vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I am the Count. He is the Count. <laughs> and we just watched Lords of Chaos, the fictionalized biopic of Euronymous from Mayhem. Yep. <laughs> and and while it, uh, like a good biopic that involves band, it, it centers on uh, Hieronymus, but it uh, it really is about the whole band. It's about the whole yeah. band. It's not even just the band, it's also the whole kind of scene. Yeah. yeah. Um. It's. It, but. But the thing is, if when you talk about the Norwegian black metal scene, you can't talk about that scene without focusing on mayhem at some point. Yeah. Because yeah, all the major important. events center around that band or connections to that band. Considering you're not, you're anonymous, owned the label that a lot of those bands were on. You yep. Know? Um. <clears throat> and he was kind of like at the center of that scene, so it makes sense to make a movie centered around him. Now the movie opens up specifically with a title card that says. Based on the truth, the lies, and what really fucking happened. happened. Yeah. So it tells you right away that, look, not everything in this movie is 100% confirmed. We have to fictionalize some stuff, and some stuff is going to be our own interpretation. But at the end of the day, we're trying to get to the Werner Herzog truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? and, like, I, can this? Can you even say that this, this a biopic has a spoiler section? I mean, well, I, I'm going to put a spoiler section here just in case some of you somehow have never heard of Mayhem and don't know what happened to that band. Yeah. Because uh, it's quite a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but don't worry. It's all right. Everyone lives. <laughs> Something I will tell you, though, is you're like, what? why are you talking about this movie on this channel? I mean, sometimes you do, like, action movies and things like that. I'm like, yeah. The reason why we're talking about this movie on this channel is not just because I love metal music. It's because Lords of Chaos is a biopic by way of a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. that gives you a little taste of what I mean by what happens to this band is quite the story. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's it's it 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 gets into that like you know natural born killers kind of territory. Oh god. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Well, that's the other thing I really like about this movie is that it's not filmed like a traditional biopic. They do a lot of really interesting shit visually yeah. and in presentation. Yeah. Some of the stuff like reminded me of the kind of stuff that you'd see like Edgar, Edgar Wright do in some of his movies, some of the more stylistic choices. Yeah. Like there's a point in which a member leaves the band and he just pops out of existence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in like a really funny comical moment and I'm like that that was pretty that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean like <laughs> one of the things that they do in the movie that was really cool is Every time they take a picture, they flash oh, to yeah. the actual picture. They'll pa they'll flash to the actual famous picture of the band or the person from yeah. the scene and actually show the picture. Um, and this includes pictures of inevitable uh, news reels and shit. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and uh, God, I, I really like this movie. It was really good. I, I, yeah, I, I thought it was a even if you like even if you're like a super purist and you're gonna sit there and go like oh well. That's not exactly how that happened. You got to admit, this is a really well done movie as it a movie. Is. It is. You know, this is actually a really well constructed horror movie. You know, <laughs> you know, like this is about this is basically about a, a character's own. Um, what do you call it? Um, well, it's it's like Frankenstein. Yeah, you know? it kind of is a Frankenstein a story. Monster, uh, like, you know? in, in his own pursuit of fame and infamy. He creates a monster that is ultimately his undoing. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that monster, for those of you paying attention, is obviously Varg Vikerson. <laughs> Vikerness. Vikerness. I don't know if yeah. I'm pronouncing that correctly because he's Norwegian. And that's another thing I want to point out about this movie. This movie has American actors using American accents, and there is no Norwegian. In yeah, this yeah, movie. yeah. They don't. They don't Norwegify things. No. Um. You know? So like that has like I know that's going to turn some people off, and it could have it could have had the effect of like Robin Hood, where you have like yeah. where you have like a Robin Ooh. Hood, but he's not speaking. Uh, he's not speaking. Uh, with a British, with a British accent, accent, and so it yeah. feels weird. However, because they do it with every character in this movie, it it becomes seamless. Yeah, it does. It does. But they did a really if, good if job. If they did it, if they just did it with with one of the characters and not all of them, it would have stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah. So they made the correct stylistic choice. If they're going to cast one person as American with that accent, everyone else sh around them should have that. Yeah, yeah. I Even only spotted everything around them is actually like you know Norwegian. I only spotted like one Norwegian accent in the entire movie. And I think that was like the person that was like the interviewer at yeah. one point. And that was yeah. it. Um, oh God, uh, all the all the performances in this movie are fantastic. Yeah, and what was it? I will say this about this movie: if you know anything about Mayhem, if you've watched any of the documentaries, because there's a documentary that's on all of this 
called um was it the light at the end light, yeah i believe it was the light at the end it was, yeah. it was something like that um, that documentary covers the same story but like with first-hand accounts of all the people that are still alive to tell yeah. their tales yeah. um there, and some there, of their there aren't as many as you might think and as and <laughs> if you watch that documentary some people have conflicting reports of how things went down which is why this movie had to you know make a choice yeah <laughs> had to make a lot of choice. like like probably the most <laughs> The most important choice is that most of um, Hieronymus's like internal dialogue is completely fictionalized because we don't know. We have no clue. We have no idea if he was haunted by the things he was haunted by in this movie. Yeah, you know, there's no way of us knowing. We can only go by what uh, people who knew him said about him. Which a lot of the stuff that like in that documentary when they, they say about him is present in this movie. Yeah, his tendency to take credit for everything that other band members yes. did is front and center in this movie and one of is one of his major undoings. Um uh this movie humanizes the band far more than even that documentary did. Because oh, yeah. you watch that documentary and everyone in this band and in that scene in general just comes across as complete either a sociopath or a psychopath. Yeah. Like none of them except for maybe one of them comes across like a human fucking being. <laughs> And this movie goes out of its way to humanize all of them in their own ways. Yeah. You know, like either highlighting neuroses or highlighting like like um insecurities or like actual things they care about. Yeah. And uh I appreciate that because as a bo- as a story, it's more interesting. <laughs> it is. It is because when you we just look at the um when you just look at the documentary stuff, you're sort of like Wow, you guys are all a bunch of fucking crazy assholes. Well, yeah, yeah, and not even like the fun. Like you look, you watch documentaries about like punk punk bands and shit like that. And yeah, they talk about the crazy shit they got into. But you can feel the energy and like, oh yeah, we had fun. We were drinking. We were doing all this or whatever. These guys are all just like, yeah, my band member killed a guy. And you're just like, are you gonna gonna elaborate, dude? Emote? Are you gonna? do anything you, you just seem very cash about this you yeah know? you know yeah. which is what i mean when i say they come across as either psychopaths or sociopaths well yeah like <laughs> they even in the movie even like touches upon that whole like this is gonna sound like shit that's the point yes you know? <laughs> yes <laughs> like i like i'll never get over the part like in in, in the documentary that you brought up the part where the guy is even today he's like trying to find the shittiest equipment to record yes. on and you're just like <laughs> What? Well, that's the Norwegian black metal thing. You know, if it sounds good, then it's bad. It's supposed to be unlistenable because you don't want the fame and infamy or whatever. But what I kind of highlighted, what I kind of like about this movie is that this movie does the thing that I've always felt about that, and that's that that was all bullshit. Well, it has to be bullshit. That was all bullshit, number one. And number two, um, that shit is why all the awful shit that happened in that scene happened. Yes. Because everyone started taking themselves way too seriously. Well, yeah, And having yeah. to one-up each other, and everyone had to be the alpha dog. And, yep. you know, and everyone had to prove that they were the true, true, the black, true black, metal. black metal. Yeah. And I don't know if back then, when they were on this scene, if they used terms like true black metal or not. But, like, that's what we use now, so... It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Um, and... I I, I I I kind of appreciate that this movie definitely takes the piss out of that. Oh, hardcore. it does! It does. It's 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 ultimately it 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 is a black comedy in the way that it is about a black. It's a black comedy about black metal. Yeah, you yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. And I, what I really appreciate this movie actually like like maybe I watched that documentary years ago when it first came out, and I'm just sitting there going like, "Wow, you're all awful fucking yeah. people! <laughs> like you're all yeah. terrible!" Yeah. Just shit stains on the existence of human beings. You are just... That's what you are. But I'm watching this movie and I'm going like, wow, you're actually making me feel for some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You're actually making me see them as human beings. Well done, filmmaker. You've done that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, oh, man. One of the things... One of the... Some of the details that I really, really, really liked about the film... um, Well, actually, this is not a detail. It's a major major part. Uh, Wow, it does not... You'll never be you. You may never be uh, afraid of uh, Varg ever again if you watch this movie. Oh no! Oh no, my god! No, no. If you know anything about Varg Vikernes, he's a, he's a guy who takes himself extremely seriously. He considers himself, you know, a political activist, and he considers himself like the true originator of black metal, or at least one of the originators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in this movie, they make him out to just be a fucking 
little bitch. <laughs> at least at the beginning. Yeah. At the beginning, he's a little bitch. Over the course of the movie, he becomes a complete and utter psychopath. Well, like... yeah, he's well. He, he's <laughs> the, the, the he never gets away from the little bitchness. Of, no, of no, which I'm sure he did not appreciate <laughs> about this movie. And yeah, I, I know he has a YouTube channel. I know he. Uh, Gave his he, thoughts about he it. He apparently reviewed this movie. <laughs> Which, oh man, like, I, I do not want to give him any clicks, but there's part of me that wants to watch that. There, there to, is some more curiosity to hear what, going I, on. I hate that guy. I yeah. hate him so much. <laughs> he's a fucking, like, Norwegian white nationalist piece of shit. Yeah. Like, he's just... Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, I love that scene where he, he um, is talking to the journalist, and the journalist is like, okay, you've got the sword, you worship Satan, you talk about Odin, and the you are also Nazi. That's quite a broad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah quite that, a broad. That's actually an system. axe to grind. I've always, I've always had this axe to grind when it comes to the Norwegian black metal scene. Is that they couldn't, like, they, they never felt like they could decide if they were like pagans who worshipped the Norse gods, yeah, or if they were Satanists. Yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know. And I'm just like, I, I get, and, and the fact that they can't decide between those two things is what leads me to believe that this is just an image thing. Well, you know? yeah. Like, you know? but, but you had to be, like, so true so it couldn't just be an image for you like it was for Venom or Slayer or any other metal band. No, you had to be real about it. Yeah. But it makes less sense. Like, well, it makes, it makes, it makes less. It, the oh, only God. thing I believe that they all truly believe is they all hated the church. Yes. That, I think, is... Uh, that's the one thing that's not up for question. Yes. They, they, hated, they hated the Christian church. Absolutely. You know? And they were all fucking bigots. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> Which, uh, yes. I'm not just saying that as just a commentary on the band or, or the band or the scene. Um, it comes up in the movie. <laughs> oh. It comes oh, yeah, up in the movie. Yeah, it comes up in the movie. You know, like, how to put it, I thought it was hilarious to, to them, like Swedish wasn't real. No, you know no. those 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 weren't good. those people weren't good enough. They're Swedish. No, no, they're just they're, they're all about life, metal, happiness, and partying. And I'm just like, you mean like ninety percent of metal? Like, yeah, you mean like like ninety like percent that of, makes it rule? Ninety percent of metal of rock music is 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 either you are singing about evil. Or you're partying. Those are the those are two modes, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are are you Guns and Roses or are you Slayer? You know, <laughs> <laughs> what even Slayer for that matter? Well, they still party. You know, they still party. Yeah, <clears throat> they still party at their shows. Well, I mean, here's the thing: these guys party too. You know, as the movie shows, they party too. They just took themselves way too seriously when they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> you it's, know, it's fucking ridiculous. So uh, I give this movie. Um, as, as to borrow from Jack, I give this movie the fucking horns. <laughs> I uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is a very fascinating biopic on a very fascinating group of fucking crazy fox. Yeah. Um, if you know nothing about mayhem, I highly recommend you watch this movie because it'll be a shocker of shockers. Yeah. Um, if you know about mayhem, then watch the movie knowing that at the beginning it makes it clear this is about the truth, the, the lies, lies, and, and what it really happened. happened. <laughs> So the lies are included in this. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. I. Oh my God. I. I'm, I can't get over like I, one of the great mo moments I really loved in the movie was when Hieronymus Her is mm -hmm. giving the um the, the, the interview. The Krang interview. Yeah. The Krang yeah, interview. Yeah. Because I remember that article. I remember yep. that interview. Yep. You know, like it was like, oh hey, look, Boom. oh. He, oh, and you put, you kept his skull and put cigarette ashes in it. Okay. Uh, well, um, never let it be said that you didn't take this all the way, sir. Good God. Well, I do appreciate that the movie questioned whether or not he did. Yes, yes. I, I appreciate yes. that. It didn't definitively give us an answer, but it questioned it. Yeah. <laughs> um... So, uh, I guess since we're now skirting towards spoilers, uh, let us move on to the spoilers. Um, but before we do, I'm going to include an Amazon affiliate link to the movie in the description below, because that's how we watch this movie, through Amazon. Yep. Um, so, uh, there you go. Spoiler time! Like I said, I don't know how you spoil a biopic. I don't know how to spoil this, because if, if, if you don't already know... 
and you're watching this without having seen the movie, um, uh, basically, uh, the tale of Mayhem and Euronymous is quite the bloody tale. Um, they're a band who their lead singer at one point kills himself. Yep. Um, and instead of, you know, calling the police or, you know, calling the family to let them know that their, their son is dead or whatever, they take a picture of his corpse and use it as their album cover. That's their first instinct. Yeah. <laughs> now, what I like about this movie is that this movie, um, added some stuff to that that we couldn't know for sure. Yeah. Um, because there's no way of anybody knowing but Euronymous himself. And as they added a lot of turmoil in Euronymous when he finds his friend dead. And they add, throughout the movie, he's haunted by the death of his friend. Yeah. But there's no way for us to actually know if he was. Yeah. Um, and that is because... Dude is dead. Yes, because Euronymous is dead because he was killed by his former bass player, Varg. <laughs> Which is the climax of this movie is ultimately leading up to them. Because basically, the plot of this movie is uh, Euronymous uh, creates the black metal scene and creates the band Mayhem and basically wants to rule the fucking world as the biggest black metal rock star that ever fucking existed. But he's mainly talk and mainly image. Yeah. But he inspires some people that are a little more than just image. And this creates a dick measuring contest. That ultimately leads to him getting murdered. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now, whether or not Euronymous was actually like this, I can't confirm. Yeah, we don't know. One way or another. Yeah. Um, in the documentary I watched, I remember a lot of them talked about Euronymous being all talk. Yeah. Which is probably what they took and played with in this movie. I know this movie is based on a book that's on the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, like, I don't know... What the book changed, what changed between the book and the movie, and what the book took from stuff like that documentary, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. But I know in the documentary they talked about Euronymous being all talk and that he had a tendency to um, take credit for things that he didn't do. So he was like, they don't say it in the doc. Yeah. But they say it in the movie, Poser. Poser, yeah. (laughs) Um, But uh, one of the people that he inspires is one Varg who is named Christian at the beginning. Yep. But, um, and this is another thing I don't know if it's true or not, where um, Euronymous uh, basically calls him a poser for, well, doesn't really call him a poser, implies he's a poser for listening to the Scorpions. Yeah. Now, I don't know if any of that is true or not, but I don't give a shit because I love making Varg look like a little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does not come off as particularly bright in this movie no. either. No. But basically, like, once Varg enters the scene and starts one-upping Euronymous, they, he burns down a church, and then yeah. Euronymous and him burn out a church together, and then uh, a person that's also in the scene, Faust, who I believe was in the band Emperor at the time, he kills a guy yeah. for being gay. Um, yep. They show that. And then becomes famous in the scene for having actually killed a guy because they talk about killing all the time, but he's yeah. the one who's actually done it besides an animal. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> this leads both Euronymous and Varg to try to one-up that by burning down a bigger church, church. Yeah. and shit like that. Um, and this ultimately leads to a back and forth between the two of them that culminates in Varg stabbing Euronymous to fucking death. Now, I know... That in the documentary, Varg insisted that it was self-defense and that, um, yeah, and that he was going to get, uh, I think it was either a gun or a stun gun. I don't know. The movie went to a stun gun. Movie had stun gun. Where yeah. he was going to grab the thing and so he protected himself by stabbing him or whatever. The movie makes it very clear that from the movie's interpretation, Varg just fucking murdered yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And intended to from the get-go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, right down to the fact that I, I have no idea if there's any confirmation of, like, the lead-up to him going to uh, Euronymous's place. Yeah. It, where he's clearly pl- planning, like, to kill yeah, a guy. Yeah, planning this murder, yeah. Now, here's the thing. When I watched that documentary and I heard Varg's, in, or Varg's like, take on what happened, I didn't buy it. Yeah, me neither. I didn't yeah, buy it one no. bit. Like, I bought everyone else who was just like, no, he murdered him. Like, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, like, how did, how did, 
you already got a guy who's sort of like, okay, I'm going to worship Odin, Satan, and uh, be a Nazi. Yeah. I'm going to already burn down churches. Yeah. Like, for really real. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not too much of a stretch. Well, because Varg, Varg's, Varg's big excuse murdered. was that, like, okay, okay, well, if you, if you didn't actually intend to murder him, why did you bring that fucking knife? Yeah. <laughs> the fucking thing. And then Varg, Varg's excuse, if I recall, was something to the effect of, like, well, he'd been talking about how he wanted to kill me, you know, so I brought it for protection and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, but you also established that he was all talk. Yeah. So, like... <laughs> Yeah, wouldn't the natural <laughs> thing have been to be, well, uh, he says a lot of shit. Yeah, you know? yeah, but I don't know. Who we, The truth is, we don't actually know, because that's between um, Euronymous and Varg, Varg. But one of them can't live to tell the tale, so... Yeah, so we'll only ever have one side of that story. That being said, the way it plays out in this movie is pretty much what my brain thought yeah. after fucking listening to Varg's take on it, like... Like, maybe he did actually go for, like, a stun gun or something like that, but probably after he got stabbed, yeah. you know? Like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Fuck, man. This... I was sitting there the entire movie because I had seen the documentary and I had, like, read about the May... everything that happened with Mayhem and the black metal scene in Norway. And so, like, I was just waiting for all the big beats a lot of the yeah. time. Yeah. Like, the moment the guy goes, the moment uh, Faust goes to the bar, I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. This yeah. Is, You're like, oh, shit. Here this we go. is where it's going to happen. This is where it's going down. Like, the the moment um, you see uh, Dead, who was Mayhem's former lead singer who killed himself, the moment you see him, like... Uh, yeah, alone. Alone. With the shotgun. Alone with the shotgun and the knife and, and looking depressed as fuck and not sure what to do with himself. Yeah. Like, as a guy who's uncomfortable in his own skin. Yeah, yeah, that suicide scene is brutal. The movie did did go with my 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 feeling. Yeah, on Dead's death after watching the documentary was that no shit, this guy killed himself. You guys were awful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like this guy clearly needed help, and instead of getting him help, you just encouraged him to kill himself. Like, yeah. What fucking friends are you like? And this movie kind of goes with that. Yeah, yeah, it really does. <laughs> and there is one of the things I I do kind of like is that they made it very clear that there were plenty of people who were like. Yeah, I'm out. You, you're taking this way too far. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because there are people who did. Like, there are many people who, like, was like, nah, I'm not going to go burn that church or fuck this, I'm done after this. Because that's why all those bands and people in that scene, like, had constant rotation of people. Yeah. You know? Like, it was a super incestuous scene that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, totally, but that's also totally. because a lot of people were just like, nah, I'm out. I'm yeah, just... yeah, yeah. Like... Yeah, you know, so turns out some people really aren't cool with you killing people. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know I, I, I draw the line on the on the killing people. I might have been okay with the church burning because no one got hurt, but mm. yeah, <laughs> stabbing a guy to death. Yeah, not 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 so great. Think I wasn't okay good. enough to be there though. Because yeah. <laughs> um. Oh God! Like the scene when Varg is doing the interview with that reporter guy. Holy crap! That's one of those things where I have no idea how that actual interview went down, but the way they played in the movie to make Varg look as pathetic as possible, I was relishing. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> well, like you gotta like it's it was it was the big how I would have done it moment. Yeah. You know, yeah. like oh my God! Like it's one of those things where you're like, well, I'm glad they caught you, but uh. Did you not think that giving these people some details was there was a lot of things that arrested? there was a lot of things those guys did that was like so stupid. It was just like you know you probably could have got away with some of this shit had you not been fucking morons who yeah. were attention seekers. Yeah, yeah, you know. Also, had you not let your egos get in the way of each other, but then again, you wouldn't have been doing any of this if you didn't let your egos get in the way of each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a foregone conclusion there. <laughs> you, know? you know? Oh, jeez. I... Wow. <laughs> Just wow. Uh, Rory uh, Culkin uh, plays Hieronymus. He's he does fantastic a great job. in this movie. I, I, I loved him in this movie. He was just... He makes you give a shit about this guy, who I'm pretty sure was also Nazi leaning on things. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, even in the movie, they kind of hint at that with, like, one of one of his lines towards yeah. uh, Varg. Um, but they still, they still made you actually care about him, and I was impressed by that. Even when you're watching the movie and going like, wow, you're, you're awful. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of a shit stain, you know? You're fucking awful. Yeah. <laughs> Why do people follow psychopaths so 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what's, what's Even they... Varg. Varg, like, when you listen to him, like, on his channel or, like, interviews with him or whatever, he comes across like a really, he, like, he really wants to be Charles Manson. Oh, yeah. Like, he yeah, really probably. wants to be Manson so badly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, uh, sorry, man. Uh, Charlie was, I, he had something as awful as he was. Yep. He had something. You know, oof. The movie goes with the idea that Euronymous wanted, essentially wanted to be a rock star, but he wanted to be a rock star by selling not being a rock star. Yeah. And, and maybe that's the way he was. I have no idea, but I bought it because. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's the kind of ridiculousness I'm used to from like, like true black metal heads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, it's like <laughs> the whole, I remember like the whole, like, you know, like, never sell out, man. You know, thing, and and then I started asking myself a very simple question. It was like, well, not selling out is great, but um, how do you keep roof over your head? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that that reminds me. That's also something I love that the movie brought up because oh, yes. it's in the documentary, and I'm glad that the movie highlighted it, even if only briefly. And that is, these people all came from very well off families. Oh yeah. These weren't like people that were like living in the fucking gutter that had to grow up poor and were just had to fight the system because fuck the system and fucked us or whatever. These were people that had decided to become psychopaths because their mom loved them. Yeah. <laughs> like, like even fucking like 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 what, what was it? Um, uh, they recorded the uh Varg's first album because his mom paid for it. Yeah. Uh, like. And like fucking um, Euronymous was able to buy his his shop in the movie because or his uh his uh, record store record store in the movie because his dad helped him yeah pay for it and you're just like huh I'm used to this kind of anger and hatred and rebellion coming from people with actual problems and um. so far the only one of you that I seem to think. Well, maybe Varg, but the only one of you that... Well, Varg has problems. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, uh, the only one of you I could seem to think that actually has any problems is dead and it's mental issues. Yeah. Um, But maybe Varg and that regard, too. (laughs) uh, That guy's clearly not right in the head, even outside of the movie. Boy, you're right. (laughs) You know? Oh, jeez. Oh, good movie, though. It's a really good fucking good movie. movie. It's, a, it, 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 it's one of the most interesting musician biopics I've ever seen on top of being, um, so far, one of my favorite horror movies I've seen this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, also, it's, a, it's a mean little flick. Oh, God, it's, it's brutal as fuck. Flick. It's brutal as fuck. This movie does not skim on the fucking gore, and which is weird to say about a movie about true events. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's fucking gory. Um, you actually get to see dude blow his head off. You know, you actually get to see um, every single stab that uh, yeah, Var I, I, gave Euronymous. I was kind of fucking. I was. I was the kind fucking, of impressed. Oh man, the hardest thing to fucking watch is the gay dude. Oh yeah, getting stabbed by Faust. Yeah, that fucking scene was just like holy shit. That you feel like you're that that felt like watching. Yeah, you feel like you're actually watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, because the, you know, there's no music. No, you know the camera angles aren't cute. It's no. very, it's very, you know, very matter of fact. Well, the scene feels like what um, that scene, the way that scene plays out, the way the character looks, and um, the way the character, the, the way the gay guy dies, um, the way Faust looks. I mean, and the way gay, the gay guy dies, that feels like what Rob Zombie was going for with his first Halloween movie. Yeah. Yeah. That. That scene in a nutshell was what he was going for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's just like, it's just cold, brutal murder. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's a great scene. It's really well done. You know? Yeah. He's like... It takes a lot to disturb me. And that scene's not like the most gory thing, but the scene got me. Well, it it started to feel too real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It does. It does feel real because it, it lacks... It lacks a, a lot of the drama, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, even like Euronymous's death later is a little bit more theatrical than um, yeah, than yeah, this guy's than that death, one. Yeah, you know? it's like Ooh. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. The biggest victim of everything in the movie is him. Yeah, because even Euronymous, like some of the shit that goes down, like he's partially. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... They they make it very clear. <laughs> is, is this is 
kind of he's this was your monster that you you created this Frankenstein and the Frankenstein turned and stabbed you like it's, yeah yeah you know this was you know that's that's the movie's take you know? now whether or not so. that's reality oh no I have no idea who knows um the movie hits all the important beats from uh every account I've seen so. yeah yeah like all the important parts of the story mm -hmm. to all the important moments where the story is told yeah. you know to all the important photographs that were taken yes you know including the de uh, including the dead body including all of the uh promotional materials that were used once they were fingered yeah you know um no yeah. really good including some of those pictures that Vargad taken for the interview, which you're like, <laughs> he's a, he's a big brain. He's a big brain. <laughs> I, I love this movie. Say. It's good. Once again, it gets two fucking horns for me. Where can they find you, Count Jackie? Oh, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter and you can find me on, uh, YouTube right here. And I stream every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every Sunday at 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, and um, you're already on my YouTube channel, so there you go. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And as always, my fellow Gorehounds, keep those horns fucking flying, and um, try not to don't, commit any hate don't crimes. Don't kill your... Yeah, don't commit hate crimes, like, man. Try not to commit any hate crimes, okay? All right? Yeah.